Hey guys, uh, today we're going to learn about the brain and uh, the first lesson would be on parts of the brain and the next lesson would be on its functions. And this is presented by me, Kaushik Chari. I'm currently studying my MBBS from Ames and you can follow me on an academy using this link. So moving on, the human brain is a pinnacle of nervous evolution because from the simple mesh-like network in Nidarians to the ganglia and ultimately we have this human brain because of which we exist, we think and everything we do is just because of this human brain. So it is formed by folding of a primitive structure called the neural tube. The brain is ectodermal in origin, so is the neural tube. So we know that there are three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm and the brain is ectodermal in origin. So the organization of neurons, the neurons in the brain are arranged in such a way that the cell bodies are on the outer surface of the brain and the axons are on the inner surface. So the cell bodies actually contain a pigment which is called as lipofuscin. Lipofuscin is a pigment that is present in the cell body because of which they, uh, it imparts a greyish tinge to these neurons and they appear grey. So this is known as the grey matter because the, gray, uh, the uh, cell bodies are on the outer surface. The outer surface is known as the grey matter and the inner surface is known as white matter because myelin imparts white colour to the axons. So as you can see this is a real time, uh, the real section from a human brain. And this part here, this on the outer surface, you can see this is the grey matter which is darker. And you can appreciate the clear cut difference of this. This is the white matter, right? So this is the grey matter and this is the white matter. Grey matter is grey because of lipofuscin and white matter is white because of myelin. <coughs> and the meninges. What are the meninges? So brain is protected by a number of structures. First and foremost by the skull. The skull uh, is, a, uh, is the bony part that protects the brain. Uh, it is also called as the cranium which protects the brain and uh, inside the cranium we have the dura matter uh, actually outside the cranium we have the skin starting from the skin then we have the skull bone then we have the dura matter dura matter is the outer tough layer which uh, forms uh, one of the meninges there are three meninges the first one is the dura matter and the second one is the arachnoid matter and the third one is the pia matter so the dura matter is the outermost tough toughest of the three meninges uh, which protects the brain the arachnoid matter as the name suggests it is a spider web like uh, menin uh, some layer and uh, and the pia matter it is uh, firmly adherent to the brain surface you cannot separate it from the brain surface so there are three spaces the first space is between the dura matter and the arachnoid matter which is known as the subdural space and this space has venous sinuses. So the venous drainage from the brain, there are venous sinuses in the subdural space which drain blood uh, from the brain. And the middle arachnoid matter, between the arachnoid matter and the pia matter, we have the subarachnoid space which contains the CSF or the cerebrospinal fluid. I'm going to talk about this in the coming slide. And it contains arteries which is the blood supply to the brain. And the innermost layer is adherent to the brain surface so there's no space between the brain surface and the pia matter. So this is what is represented in this picture here. You can see the skin. This is the bone. And here you have the dura matter. So in between the dura matter and the arachnoid matter, we have this venous sinus. So this, this triangular shaped structure over here, this represents a venous sinus. And this arachnoid matter, as you can see, it is like a spider web that is between the dura and the pia matter. And this is the arachnoid matter. Here you can see a single artery. And uh, the innermost layer is the pia matter, which is strictly other into brain and it follows the brain along its convolutions. So these are the three meninges. What is the cerebrospinal fluid? The cerebrospinal fluid uh, is what bathes the brain all around. It is present in the subarachnoid space and the ventricles of the brain. What are the ventricles of the brain? I'm coming to it in the next slide. So the brain has four ventricles. And uh, first let's focus on the CSF. The CSF is a sterile fluid that is present in the subarachnoid space as well as the ventricles. Where is Why is there CSF? So uh, the brain actually floats in the CSF. So it acts as a, uh, gives buoyancy to the brain. So that is one of the main reasons why CSF is there. If you if you suppose take out a brain from a living person and put it on a table, it will just collapse. So the uh, CSF is there so that it provides buoyancy to the brain and decreases the weight of the brain. Okay, so uh, where does the CSF come from? The CSF comes from a structure known as the choroid plexus in the ventricle. So it is for now it is more than enough to remember this name choroid plexus from the ventricles in the brain. So where does the CSF go? So the CSF is absorbed by arachnoid villi into the subdural veins. So if you look at the 
picture over here you can see this small mushroom like structure that is protruding into the venous sinus from the arachnoid matter and this is where we have the csf right the subarachnoid space so the csf from here is absorbed into the venous sinus so the brain the brain is divided into the four brain or prosencephalon which contains the cerebrum hypothalamus and thalamus the mid brain or mesencephalon and the hind brain or rhombencephalon which contains the cerebellum pons and uh, cerebellum pons and the medulla they are symmetrically divided into right and left halves so we have the picture of the brain here so this brain as you can see the this is the convoluted surface which is the cerebrum so the cerebrum is a highly convoluted structures uh, which it's, it's raised into crests and troughs so the crests are known as the gyri and the troughs are, are known as the sulci so we have the gyri and the sulci and uh, here it is labeled that this is the thalamus and this is the hypothalamus so it is important to remember the name of these structures so the forebrain consists of the cerebrum the thalamus and the hypothalamus and uh, this is the part of the midbrain which is labeled over here this is the midbrain and then we have the pons the cerebellum and the medulla along which uh, constitute the hindbrain and the medulla extends forward to form the spinal cord so now where are the four ventricles of the brain so this is one half of the brain actually if you put another half to this so this empty space over here connects to the empty space on the other side and it makes a ventricle and the uh, on each side we have two ventricles right so this is one ventricle and if you connect the other half from the other side that becomes the second ventricle so we have the two ventricles of the brain here and this uh, space that is lying above the midbrain just try to imagine that the, the, the space that's just lying above the midbrain is the third ventricle and this cerebral aqueduct that you see over here is connecting the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle which lies behind the pons and in front of the cerebellum so just try to imagine over here so this empty space over here this empty space over here which constitutes the thalamus and the hypothalamus is filled with cerebrospinal fluid and forms one ventricle and if you add the other half of the brain they two together make two ventricles and the space that's lying just above the midbrain which contains the cerebrospinal fluid is the third ventricle the cerebral aqueduct connects the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle and the fourth ventricle lies just behind the pons and in front of the cerebellum so even if you don't understand all of this it's important to remember that the brain has four ventricles and the cerebral aqueduct connects the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle and that would be more than enough so what is the corpus callosum corpus callosum is a band of fibers corpus callosum is a band of fibers that connects one half to the other half so now there are two halves of the brain so they obviously have to communicate between each other and that occurs through the corpus callosum which connects one half to the other half so you can get an mcq saying what is the corpus callosum corpus callosum is a band of fibers that connect one half of the brain to the other half so now how is the csf formed so the csf csf is formed in these ventricles in a structure called as the choroid plexus and from these ventricle it enters the subarachnoid space through certain foramen whose names you are not required to know at this moment so from the ventricles it enters the subarachnoid space through certain foramen from the subarachnoid space as i had showed you in the previous slide through the arachnoid villi it gets absorbed into the subdural veins so the key points here is that the cerebrum is a cerebrum is a convoluted surface with gyri and sulci and is the seat of intelligence so why is the cerebrum convoluted so you can get an assertion reason question cerebrum is highly convoluted what would be the reason the reason would be to increase the brain surface area to increase the amount of neurons that can be accommodated within the brain and we have the four ventricles and the csf so it is very important to remember these three things and now uh, if you see this picture over here i told you that the csf is formed in these ventricles in these ventricles and it exits through the foramen here and it bathes the entire brain so the brain doesn't collapse on its own weight because of the csf that is bathing it all around and it gives it a certain amount of buoyancy because of which the brain doesn't collapse otherwise if you remove a brain from a live person it would collapse so the take home message from this chapter would be that you should know the parts of the brain and the about the cerebrospinal fluid and also about the meninges so if you know the basic structure of the brain then you could you will be able to understand the next lesson which is on the functions of the brain so thank you for watching that's it for this lesson